Dear Muji, what happened to me after I came back from London is quite strange. I didn't oppose myself to almost anything like before. I was relaxed. I didn't want anything to happen. At a certain point, I even thought I was enlightened because I didn't feel any psychic suffering anymore. I asked myself why I didn't suffer and found that there was no more identification. <laughs> a powerful sense of freedom caught me, but I was frightened because there was no more moral sense. I could do anything. <laughs> now I don't have projects or urgent desires anymore. But what often brings me back to the ego suffering is physical pain. Apparently, my liver doesn't work so well, and I have been suffering from headaches, fatigue, and problems of the digestive tract for years. I did all the exams, and apparently there is nothing organic, nothing serious. But I really want to get rid of this heavy physical pain, and this desire brings me back to fear, to wanting, and to anxiety. After satsang, I couldn't practice yoga, meditation, martial arts anymore. And as I teach some practices, I even felt awkward to teach them, even if they have been useful to me. I sometimes feel it's nonsense because as long as there is identification in the body-mind, there is suffering. What I feel is that my ego has been knocked out but is still alive and I want to eradicate it, Leonardo. <laughs> uh, yes, Leonardo. I'm sure many people can identify with this type of um, testimony and observations. Don't have any projects anymore, any... But what brings uh, brings me back to the ego suffering is physical pain. You see, you say before this. At a certain point, I even thought I was enlightened because I didn't feel any any psychic suffering anymore. I asked myself why I didn't suffer, and found that there was no more identification. You see, it's there. No more identification. No suffering is there. Pain can be there but not suffering, because they are different. Pain is physical. In physical pain, we all will feel it. But suffering is something that will be determined according to the attitude. If you identify with the pain, it will become a kind of suffering, you see. Why is it happening to me? You know, what can I do? What did I do? Maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I'm not done. This is causing, developing suffering, you see. Mm -hmm. A powerful sense of freedom caught me, beautiful, but I was frightened because there was no more moral sense. I could do anything. Yeah, this came in the mind. No, I don't have any. Nothing is right or wrong. I can do anything I want. You see, but as yet the cook, the truth is not yet baked completely inside the heart. This is still some arrogance. You know, it's still there is still some a little criminal thought going. You know, it feels a bit hard, but now there's no right or wrong anymore. You see, but it's still a premature mm, expression. You better keep quiet. You see, maybe you feel this, you detect this. It's good, it's fine, but just keep quiet. You see, in your heart, share it with me, but don't share it with anybody else. Just keep quiet. But what often brings me back into the ego suffering is physical pain. <coughs> and then you list also what is this physical pain? A liver is not working so well. I've been suffering from headaches, fatigues, and problems. Sometimes, uh, as your own meditative consciousness, your contemplative mind is now in ascendance. It's now uh, flowering. You see, strangely enough, uh, unusual phenomena begin to manifest in the form sometimes of pain. Uh, fatigue, all these things are coming up. It's part of a kind of psychic detoxing also can happen. 
and many people feel pain and then they start to have doubt but why should I feel pain now if this if I'm being free why I should feel pain I said watch the tendency of the mind to start making conclusions about anything don't allow any of your concepts to tighten up don't close your concepts just stay like open seeing don't determine anything don't judge don't make any conclusion just keep quiet all these things are simply bubbles arising in the ocean the ocean is not going to be disturbed by them you remember this you see don't start to look at the bubble oh this one means this i must go do this because that is still co keeping a contact with an identity which is also a bubble so you must be very very uh, I'll, I'll use the word in this case a bit vigilant in this moment to, to, to just keep quiet don't interfere for a moment just live through your eyes let everything else shut down a little bit just be only observing uh, with detachment and let these let these bubbles come up they're going to come up sometimes lots of bubbles come together they form themselves into a kind of tsunami it's okay it's just a movement in you and I want you to consciously experience these waves in their intense uh, what I may call their extremes even to that don't uh, don't be pulling your your parachute too early just let them go let everything go you stay put only in the silence of seeing this is what I would advise for you sometimes also pain comes uh, as one of nature's one of God's beautiful ways of stopping you from becoming arrogant because maybe you're thinking now I'm enlightened now you see if the pain didn't come maybe you start to conduct satsang you're sitting in front of people and you're not yet ready so that pain comes to keep it real keep you here still and so gradually so you can cook underneath a bit more deeply you keep quiet simmer down simmer down into this you're still burning you're still in the fire those parts of you that keep 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 the sense of being a person alive in you that's still in the fire. Let it burn on completely. Don't take anything out of the fire too quickly. Now, where can I pick up again here now? Uh, then you say, yes, you know, you. I did all these examinations, and apparently there's nothing organic, nothing serious. You see? Sometimes you go to the doctor, and the doctor cannot find anything really wrong. You see, not physically, because maybe some psychic thing manifesting in a physical way. It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. Hmm. I really want to get rid of this heavy physical pain, and this desiring uh, brings me back to fear, to wanting, and to anxiety. Now you you pay attention to that. Just pay attention to that. Don't go and put on your truck suit. Don't put on your working clothes. Don't try and go to work on yourself. Stay in your pajamas. Keep quiet. Now you say after satsang I couldn't practice yoga, meditation, martial arts anymore. Of course, it's now time to be in bed. Stay in bed, inside here. And as I teach some of these practices, I even felt awkward to teach them, even if they've been useful to me. So in the past maybe you are doing these exercises, you're doing whatever you have to do, and some people find that for a while they cannot do yoga anymore. They cannot do all these things. They cannot. They had all so many practices. But now something is replacing these practices for a moment, taking your attention off these things for a moment. Higher than this thing, you must come. Leave all these now. And you see that an aspect of the mind is still attached to these practices. You, see? you say, but this has been my livelihood, and this is how people know me. It's my identity. They say, yes, yes, but you leave this now. Because you called me, and I've come. So come with me. This is the higher, your higher truth is. Is in ascendance, so you leave all these things now, leave everything now. I even felt awkward to teach them, even if they have been useful to me. I sometimes feel it's nonsense because as long as there is identification in the body mind, there is suffering. This is again, you'll find that uh, from your wisdom is coming. It might appear two voices are coming the voice from the mind and the voice arising from the self to remind you. So this little oscillation is still there. One wants to say, yes, but this is how I have been. I only know how I have been. And now there's emptiness here. There's only, I don't know what I am here. 
So I cannot stand. There is nothing here. But I says, keep quiet. Don't try and find a new task for yourself. Keep quiet. This voice is coming, you see. What I feel is that my ego has been knocked out, but is still alive, and I want to eradicate it. The ego has got a punch in the solar plexus. He's been knocked out, but still alive, you see. Don't try and kill him. Leave him there. You just don't keep company with that. Because he's breathing on you like parasite. A parasite cannot live by himself. A parasite cannot live by himself. He needs company. But you don't need his company, but he needs your company if he's going to live. So you stay by yourself. And by itself, it will just, it's this dream, this nightmare will vanish by itself. That's all. If you want to kill the ego, now you have to raise another ego as a killer to kill this ego. Then more trouble come, more time. And the mind buys time through these vain and uh, illusory intentions. So you keep quiet. Like this, it will eradicate itself. So uh, when you hear my response, you can go over it again, over it. Because it's really speaking directly to, to the points you mentioned. You see, overall, in a nutshell, you keep quiet. Don't get entangled in the suggestions of your mind or the readings in the body. Don't be so quick to interpret them because who is interpreting them? If you remember the self and instantly you are the self because the self is not the what to do region. Remember the self, you are the self. Remembering the self, being the self is the same thing. When you are the self, these things that are underneath you, they don't trouble you. You have to go to the region of the mind. The mind will raise doubts. Oh, are you sure you really got it? Are you sure you really got it? And then doubt come. You see? So when you can see the doubt, and even the doubter itself, then the doubts cannot survive. So, you see? And this is Leonardo. Leonardo, this is Leonardo da Vinci. He's a very creative man. Leonardo is the mind. Very creative, you see? But you have to be Leonardo, the ninja turtle. <laughs> and he is not have no identity now. He's just playing. But he's emptiness. Uh, very good. Thank you. <laughs>